Center. Yeah, I, uh, I, I started here when I was, I started doing shows here in the Children's Theater Program when I was around 12. And uh, I, I went to Strathaven High School. I'm from, originally from the Wallingford Swarthmore area. And I uh, did shows both here and at Young People's Theater Workshop, which is at the Swarthmore Players Club growing up. So I did a lot of um, youth theater and community theater. And then I, uh, I started working, I started um, directing here once I was in college. Uh, I went to college at Point Park University. It was originally called Point Park College when I was there at, uh, in Pittsburgh. So I would come home in the summers and I would direct the children's theater shows here. And then recently, in the past couple of years, I've directed the main stage show here. We did Ragtime and My Favorite Year uh, a couple of years ago. So, okay. yeah. Now- uh, you've uh, selected Yo Dragons as a play to write, for, adapt from a book. What about that story led you to do that ad- adaptation? Uh, it's you know, well, I grew I grew up with um, the Shackners, who um, Judy Shackner wrote the book, and and her daughters Emma and Sarah were a little bit younger than me, but I knew them, and and. Uh, I had originally written a, a story for uh, Upper Darby Summer Stage. I had written a, another show for them called Elliot and the Magic Bed. And uh, I was interested in turning, it was an original story that I was interested in turning into a children's book. So I went to see Judy, who is a children's author, and she gave me a copy of Yo Vikings and said, you know, uh, this could be an example for you. And it, I, I, I kind of fell in love with the book but it, I, I shelved it for a while, and then when Harry uh, Dietzler was talking to me about possibly writing another show for this summer, I pulled the book out, and I thought that a lot of the themes in it had to do with sort of a lot of the things that we talk about at Summer Stage, which is community and sort of being an individual within that community, but being a leader in the community, and I thought it would be a great show for the kids. One of the biggest challenges is that the book is, uh, you know, a 15-, a, 16-page a picture book, so it doesn't have a lot of conflict in it. It has a great story, but there's not a lot of conflict. And for a play, you need to have enough conflict to drive you to the end so that, you know, we we have challenges for the main character to face. And so we first had to kind of re take the take the story and restructure it a little bit to give um, to give it a more clear sort of um, story arc for our main character, Emma. But we also had to expand it because uh, we were writing this show for a very large cast, and, and so we wanted to figure out a way to sort of incorporate all the elements that the book had, but figure out a way to sort of... We, we realized that you know there are, there are passages in the book where it says, and then Emma read about the Vikings, and so we decided, you know, well, we need to invent some Viking characters, and we need to have a, a whole story arc with that. So we created a, a story arc that is... A complete side plot that has to do with these Vikings, and um, and then we also kind of there was a, there's a message in the book where the librarian says something about spare the sword, summon a book, and so we decided to expand that part of the story and come up with this whole idea that the library in the town was closing and that and that the kids had to save it at the end. So we kind of had to expand the story to give it more dramatic weight. Um, Did you work with uh, the uh, with Judith Shackner in uh, in your we, revisions or we yeah originally we spoke to her about um, I I I did sort of a treatment for her I wrote down sort of like the ideas of how I was going to expand the story and she approved it and and then she and then she kind of gave us you know then she kind of gave us you know the go ahead and said do what you're going to do with it yeah, how large a cast are you working with? We have seventy three in our cast, uh, and this is a this is a this is the a moderate size for Upper Darby Summer Stage. The last show that they just did, the one that was running this week, Magic Up Our Sleeve, was a review show that I think had upwards of you know it almost had ninety or something in it. Um, that, that's sort of how we do things here. We have this big stage, and the program has hundreds of literally hundreds of kids that are involved in the program. So. Um, we we have a very large cast and but it th- it makes for a, a beautiful spectacle of a show because you have this enormous theater and this this big cast um, 
and uh, it, it, you know, it's really going to feel very full and, and very, very alive. We have, you know, I think we have these two separate choruses. So we have the, this, um, this classroom chorus, which is Emma's classmates, and then we have something like 45 Vikings. <laughs> so, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's definitely a spectacle to see. So, children's ages. Run They're about thirteen to seventeen. Uh, a lot of our principal characters are are juniors and seniors in high school, and uh, and then we have, and then we also have um, some junior high, middle school age kids as well. From they're Delaware they're from County, all all over all over, De all over Delaware County. Delaware so County. basically, yeah. So we have kids from the Wallingford Swarthmore area where I grew up, and we have kids from Upper Darby, and we had kids kids from Haverford, and um, you know, so basically all over this area, they they basically all come together in the summers. Right, and so obviously, casting the show was not a problem, other than paring it down. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, th you know, the hardest thing about casting here is that you have too many choices. Uh, you have, you know, what's great about the program is that all these kids really want to be here and they're diehard theater kids so they you know they show up on audition day and you you know you've you've got your work cut out for you because you've got a lot of options because you've got 70 73 kids and you got to cast a show so the theme um, of the yeah. show is that this little girl wants to be uh, she wants she wants to inspire people and by by so that she can have a real adventure in her life that's what she keeps saying is that she wants a real adventure and in the end she realizes that the real adventure is being herself and being a kid and and enjoying her town and her community and and so I think that's something that we all can relate to and and we have these two different sides because the 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 her mother uh, kind of delivers the message of the show at the end of the show. So we, we have a parent's message and a kid's message, and, and they kind of interweave. So I think it's basically for all ages. And I also feel that the way that the show is written, you know, um, my writing partner and I decided at the very beginning, we said, you know, we're writing a family show, but we want to write it in the style of something that, you know, kind of transcends that. So we're hoping that it will feel like you know, a Broadway style musical, um, and not a, like a, you know, a quote unquote children's show. So we think that it'll be for everybody. And we, we're hoping that people will really sort of connect to the story and, you know, that's, that's our, that's our hope anyway. Quite an, amb quite an ambitious, uh, it is, thing, but not a problem. Yeah, it is. You know, that's, I, I was just in there with you. You just got to, got to look at the set. What are you thinking? I'm sure you've I'm, seen the sketches and the models. Absolutely. No, I'm thrilled. I mean, we have such a, we have such an amazing technical staff here and it's just gotten better and better over the years. I mean, I've been, I've been involved with this program now for 15 years and the tech staff just keeps getting better and better and, and we keep expanding what we can do. And this show is so large in scale because we have, we kind of weave in and out from reality to fantasy back and forth, back and forth. So we have, you know, a, a uh, a frost giant on stage we have uh, a dragon sequence we have a, a longboat sequence where they're on longboats you know in in a stormy sea so we're like really <laughs> we're going full out with this thing and uh and i i couldn't be happier with all the work that everybody's doing here it's going to be it's going to be really beautiful so are there any local references in, in, in lots actually yeah the, the, we decided uh, the book does not specify where it takes place, but we decided that the show was going to take place in Swarthmore because it's based on a true story. And um, the the Emma, who is the, the main character in the book, is based on Judy Shackner's daughter, Emma, who actually had a Viking ship in her backyard for a very long time until it kind of deteriorated. I mean, she wore it out. <laughs> And uh, but I remember driving past their house and seeing the dragon's head sticking up over the bushes, and uh, so we decided to set it in Swarthmore because we thought that that was going to have a lot of local interest, and so there are references to places in Swarthmore. We talk about Renato's Pizza, and we talk about uh, we talk about Lang Hall at Swarthmore College, and so there are some there are some local references, and I think that people will really connect to the fact that it, it is a it, you know it is a story about our community about Delaware County so I, I think that you know that that is part of also what we're what we're hoping to do 